Hello, my name is Amy Sturkey. I am a pediatric physical therapist and I am with Nathan Todd. <laughs> now, Nathan is someone I treated when I was a very young therapist and uh, I haven't seen him since he was 12. And uh, Nathan is um, a social media person all in his own right. <laughs> um, just, um, re I actually reconnected you because I saw you uh, on Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Facebook, I think. Anyway, Nathan, tell us about you. Yeah, so as Amy said, really young therapist, I was looking back at one of your videos where you were doing a Q&A and you are like, yeah, I've been doing this 33 years. I was like, oh man, that means I was one of the first <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, clients there. Um, so about me, I like to say I'm just a dude who was born eight weeks premature, four pounds, 10 ounces and diagnosed with cerebral palsy at the age of two. Uh, one of my missions is to eradicate loneliness in the world, and I believe that starts one conversation at a time. Huh. Uh, uh, can you tell us, you you were born premature, and uh, how, how long were you in the hospital? Oh man, it was something like 50, <laughs> like it was a long time. Really? It was It was a long time, I was looking at the book the other day and I was like, wow, I was in the hospital for that long. And there's actually a note in there. And I think this is important for all the parents that are watching that uh, my mom talked about there were other kids they saw come, go, and some that didn't leave. So luckily I'm here today and I was one that got to leave. Wow. Um, and do you know what your early milestones were? Yeah, so, I, I like to say <laughs> the important one is I didn't learn to walk until I was about four. four years old. Um, and everything else, as far as speaking, that was on track with like normal development milestones. But one of my favorite stories about walking is I have a younger brother who's three and a half years younger than me. <laughs> and so he's learning to walk at the same time I'm learning to walk. And we went to the park one time and he wanted to go down the hill to the park. My mom's trying to explain, uh, Nathan can't walk. So we got to do this carefully. He's like, oh, I got him. It'll be good. <laughs> so off we go, these two little kids. We took like two steps and we just went rolling down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's one of the things they say is that uh, siblings can help spur of development because especially when you're right about the same age level and sounds like that's when you decided to walk it's like hey man if he's going to be walking i'm going too because i'm the big bro yeah a hundred percent that was probably what was going on well i'm the bigger brother i'm supposed to be doing this uh, but he definitely spurred that on for sure right so tell me now uh how, about how the cerebral palsy affects your daily life what you're able to walk independently yeah um so a couple of things that I would tell any parent for sure. Uh, your kid's going to reach an age where they don't want to go to therapy. Uh, that's a normal conversation, a normal part of growing up. And as that kid, I would tell the kid watching, uh, continue to go <laughs> as long as you can. Uh, you don't know that until you actually go through life. But... Um, there are definitely things that I could do when I was younger that I can no longer do. And that's just, I mean, they say cerebral palsy is not progressive, <laughs> but aging is. Aging. So <laughs> cerebral palsy is progressive. That's the way that I look at it. Um, so find something that works for you. Uh, and that's what I would tell any parent as well. You got to find the thing that is going to make the kid want to do it and figure out a way to make that happen so that it's not like, oh, I have to go do this. I want to do this because it's going to help me do something else. Um, another important lesson, and I was hard headed in this one, is the fact that so I don't walk 100 percent of the time uh, if I'm going places where I walk for long periods of time or I know I'm standing, I will take a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't want to do that when I was younger. I was like, well, I can walk, so why don't I walk? And my mom was like, 
So do you want to go with your friends? And just by the time you get to the place you're trying to enjoy what you're doing, you're worn out just because you proved that you could walk somewhere. And that took a long time oh, wow. <laughs> to get that message in my head where, oh, she's right. I would rather just use the wheelchair and be ready to go wherever I'm going than to just be worn out and tired. Right. So um, I, I'm trying to introduce and interview people who have different levels of cerebral palsy. So you can walk independently, but sometimes you use a wheelchair. Um, are you able to walk up and down stairs? Uh, <laughs> so I can do that probably not as well as I could when I was actively going to therapy. Uh -huh. I think that's something that like a regress as age set in and different things were happening, but I can go up and down stairs. I prefer to have a railing, uh -huh. um, and we'll use my arm. If there's no railing, you know, one of the funny things is a lot of times people don't get out of the way oh, wow. if they're leaning up against a railing. So I would say that's an important uh, point to advocate for yourself. If somebody's standing <laughs> at a railing and you need to use it to be able to get down to use your voice and say, hey, can you get out of the way, please? Or else I'm just going to fall down this and this is going to be a big scene for everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, so I'm, I'm just trying to think. So uh, I'm talking to the guy who uh, is eradicating loneliness and labels, and I'm about to try to figure out the label. I'm so sorry. So a uh, level one uh, a gross motor function classification level one is someone who walks independently and can go up and down stairs without holding on. A level two person can go up and down stairs, but they have to hold on to a rail. So I would think I would say somewhere in between. The next level is someone who needs to use some sort of adaptive device to get around. So level three people tend to use a walker um, to be able to move, navigate around. So maybe somewhere between level two and level three. Uh, I don't know. I would say between one, one and, and two. two. One and two. Um, but I think just you saying that kind of makes me think look at it at how it can be a linear kind of process and you can move in and out of all the different levels because i still a wheelchair is an adaptive piece of equipment so at that point i'm uh level three right right so i think that's important to realize that you can move in and out of Absolutely. all the levels right now, uh, when we, you were young, I know you had physical therapy. You did, did you do other therapies as well? I uh, had speech therapy for a little bit, occupational therapy. Um, so those are the main therapies that I had throughout my life. And, um, yeah, I would just continue to reiterate that keep it for as long as you've got. And for parents, there's going to be a point where – your kid gets to this middle ground and it's like, whoa, what happened? Uh, what happened to all these things that my kid was getting? And unfortunately, that middle ground is like 21 to whatever your retirement age is going to be. <laughs> so it's not really a middle ground. It's a, it's a long period of life. So I think it's important to, um, even if you can't, go to therapy and you've been for a little bit, continue to do the practices that they teach you, even if you have to do it on your own. I, I would say that what I have seen over time as a therapist is it, it is not uncommon for individuals with any condition. At some point, they go, Poh, I'm so done. Yeah. But it's not uncommon also for me to see them come back later. For them to realize, you did that circle of, wow, this is important. I need yeah. to keep, keep taking care of my body. So uh, I, I just, I th think you have to be with who, where you are in the moment and look at your priorities. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I think this is a great beginning of our conversation. I, I can't wait to continue it in a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. If you like this video and would like to be notified by email when the next video comes out, Click the subscribe button here and click the golden bell icon and ensure notifications are enabled on your account.